ಯುಗೇನ ಚಿತ್ತ ಪದೇನ ವಾಚನ್ ಮಲಂ ಶರೀರ ವೈದ್ಯಕೇನ ಯುಪಾಕರತ್ತಂ ಪ್ರಬಲಂ ಮುನೀನ ಪತಂಜಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಂಜಲಿರಾನುತೋಸ್ನಿ last time we discussed uh, about uh, that um, uh, 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 that due to you see when you are born again you are born according to you the what they call in the yoga shastra vipaka vipaka means the jati ayu bhoga bhoga means both positive and negative sukha and dukha jati means uh, the species you are born ayu is your longevity and bhoga this is uh, the vipaka of karma this is the uh, vipaka means uh, they are fractifying vipaka uh, is uh, the is in english it is fractified so uh, and um, so uh, um, so when you were born again so according to your vipaka that means specially you are born uh, in a special you are a human being a dog a plant etc so um, this your desires which conform to this vipaka you see from that you have a manifestation of sanskara sanskara means impression ah. uh for example you are born as a dog so many of your human faculties are not necessary right? but something is necessary for example your agility your uh this uh, tremendous uh power of smelling and recording those smellings these are necessary for a dog okay. so uh, uh, idea is that those things will be uh, your manifested other things will be kept in abeyance okay. so that is the idea and you have uh, 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 so manifestation of your desires are according to the, that vipaka now the question arises that for example you are a, an animal after uh, having been a human being or a vegetal something and uh, then after a few births you are born again as a human being i say so how is it that you see normally a uh, something happens due to something preceding it now when there is so much of difference how does it happens you may be born instead of india for in country europe or china you may be uh, you are born after 500 years uh, from now on see uh, so how do you see this uh, uh, uh things operate then so this sutra 9 they saying jati desha kala bhavahitanam api anantajam siti sanskara eko rupatvat now when you are separated by jati species 
by country, by time, you are separated, you are, you are that means a manifestation in another. For example, in the case of your, um, uh, this, uh, Sarat and Shashi, Swami Saradananda and Ramakrishnananda, who are in Palestine, you see, with Jesus, they came here and were born in Bengal and uh, you see, became uh, eventually disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. Now, uh, you see, the huge amount of difference, you see, 1900 years of difference. Uh, now, um, how does it happen? So that this sutra is explaining that when it is separated, even then there is you know, a, a closeness, closeness because Siti Sanskara Eko Rupatva, this memory and impression, they are of the same kind. What does it mean? It means uh, that uh, you have the impression of samskara according to your feeling. Whatever the mind is feeling, that is generating a kind of samskara. Now, for example, you have attended a session of music and the musician, you see, uh, did very well. And this thing, uh, you felt it and you want to be a musician like that. First of all, you have certain age and you, are, you have not practiced it for uh, see, since your childhood, etc., or early youth. So it will be difficult for you to achieve uh, your goal. So what is uh, what will happen? This, uh, your impression will remain. And after your death, you are born again. If this impression is very strong, and you are again born as a human being, uh, this uh, impression will remain because it has been felt by the mind. So you'll seek, you see, because uh, this impression is a kind of uh, muffled your memory. So you seek, you see, uh, a training as a musician, etc., and you are doing it, etc., you are progressing, and you have learned uh, you know, uh, optimally music. Then perhaps one day you are attending a session where a person is both singing and dancing, and you are very much impressed by it, and you want to do that also. So you see, this impression, this is uh, bolstering the memory and memory is bolstering the impression. So you'll seek this again and as in the case of music, so in the case of dancing, you will try to seek in this life, and another life, such a thing. So these things continue like this. Ah. And they are not eliminated because you are in another species, in another country, in another time, you see, uh, they continue. Whatever you have, you have felt that remains in your mind uh, to give your rise to desire. 
you see. That's why the yogi should be very careful about this desires, you see. You see. Because all desires lead to samskara, samsara. And uh, so when the desires are not of the spiritual type, they will entangle you finally. Next sutra, Tasam Anaditya 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 Ashisho Nittatvat Tasam Tasam means this um, uh, uh, this uh, unfulfilled desires when a desire is fully fulfilled, normally this desire will die out. You see, it may of course be bolstered also. Uh, you wanted wealth and you have some wealth and you want more wealth, you see. So you see, it may be. So here this sutra is saying that ashisha, ashisha means it is a special term in yoga shastra. Uh, it means <coughs> your prayer for an unfulfilled desire. This is ashisha. This ashisha nittatva, that means it is eternal, this ashisha, especially the especially the central ashish of mankind that uh, let death not come to me. Yeah. Let me remain, you see, alive forever. So this is due to your the uh, the suffering of death. You see, suffering of death felt at many, many births. This has gone so deep into the mind that we are not aware of this, that this is, you see, we are, uh, we are afraid of death because we have suffered your uh, pangs of death. So, uh, so like that, you see, uh, since this is, so basanas are also, because when you want to leave, you see, you cannot leave without a, with a void mind. There will be desires in the mind, normally, unless you are a great yogi. There will be desires in the mind, so, since this ashisha is eternal, so your desires are also eternal. There is no end to it, normally. So, then the question will come that how to put an end to it, because that is the goal of yoga. Hmm. So the next sutra is saying, Hetu phala ashraya alambanai sangrihitvat sangrihitvat esham abhabe tad abhava. That means Hetu uh, uh, is your reason. Follow is the fruit. Ashraya is where the basana is taking refuge, that is your mind. And your um, alambana is the, your, uh, this uh, smriti, 
this, uh, your, you have smriti, you see, memory which you have discussed, you see. This is, so with the support of these things, you see, they exist, the desires. So if the supports are gone, so the desire will go away. That is the idea. Now, what does it, uh, you see, mean actually? Now, the chitta vritti, the modifications of the mind, uh, which are due to basically avidya, you see, because you remember the cycle in the yoga, avidya, then from that Radha Dvesha, eh? Avidya Asmita Radha Dvesha Avinivesha. Uh, this, you see, so everything comes from Avidya, that means you have basically wrong, non spiritual vision of life, that is the root cause of everything. So so that is your hetu. So then, uh, if these are the hetu means the, the reason for the desires, then what is the fruit of the desires? Desires give your smriti. Because, uh, because of desire, why do you desire something? Because you have, uh, you see, at least tested a little of that thing. So, and you liked it. So the memory of this liking, you see, is uh, giving rise to desire. You want to have it again and again. <clears throat> now, when these desires are not subdued sufficiently, then they create your a bundle of karma. Because mentally desiring is also a karma. Karma is not just what you are doing it to your body, what you are doing it to your mind, that is also karma. So they, they form the bundle of karma and which is giving rise to Vipaka, Jati Ayuvoga. Now, uh, in this Jati Ayuvoga, you are pursuing the desires. So from that again, uh, Smriti comes and by the support of the Smriti, you are proceeding certain times in the path of Dharma, certain times in the path of Adharma. Ah. So from that, your, as a result, this um, uh, avidya is generating because to go beyond avidya, you have to go beyond dharma, dharma. Uh, dharma is uh, what you do for, you know, as a meritorious act to have better life, better enjoyment in the afterlife, you see. And adharma is that immediate gain, you, you say doing something wrong, you are hurting against the divine order, uh, which is called rita, from which the idea of dharma has come at all. 
so in this way it goes away so when you can break you say this hetu you say for example you say when you can check the inflow of desires etc which is not easy without your because a liking you cannot uh, nullify it without another liking so there must be your uh, some spiritual you say inclination to like spiritual things which will gradually you know, erode away your non spiritual desires and now now if the desires and because of the desires the effects there are if they are happening all the time then is the your mind that the chitta is being destroyed at every moment and another chitta is produced to answer this question the next sutra is there atita anagatanam sarupata asti adhavedat dharmanam now this um, dharma ah dharma uh, that uh, you see uh, really really they are existing in the past and also in the uh, your future it is not in the your because uh, you see uh if something is uh, producing something else at this moment you see you remember this patitya samutpad buddha's that uh, something is coming before and that is producing something so the whole thing is a flow you see now you see here the sutras say the yogis say that <coughs> this a thing you see something is at the present moment so in the past and in the future they must have been for example if this building has come up Uh, just now it has been built and it has been finished at this moment suppose in one building now it the past it must have been you see because in the past when your planning was done then the building in a very subtle way began to exist and you through your effort made it manifest now and one day after thousands of years if the building is not there even then it will exist in the future in some subtle way you see because uh, something which is there it cannot be annihilated you see something which is totally 
uh, you're uh, absent all the time, that you cannot produce. For example, what they say, this um, Akasha Kushuva, a flower made of space. This is just, a, you see, a, these are words. There is no corresponding meaning to it. You see? So such things are totally absent. There is a, nothing in the past, nothing in the future, nothing in the present of this thing. You see? For all other things, there is a past and there is a present, though it is manifest at the present time, there is your an existence uh, your, in the past and in the present. Hmm. So, um, uh, so this uh, your knowledge that this thing is a is a is a continually existing from the past to the present to the future. You see, it is necessary this knowledge to free the chitta, the mind, from the impact of the flow of the sins before our uh, perceptory organs. You see. Because, uh, you see, uh, that is uh, very much uh, necessary to understand that something was in the past, so you should be careful, you see, in when you are a yogi, you should be careful when he is in the world and he is uh, your, just for the continuation of his life, he is doing many things. So that new desires do not crop up. Now, uh, next sutra, uh, is explaining that um, if this dharmas ah, uh, that the dharmi is uh, dharmi that means one uh, something which has got this dharma they are in certain state, only that these uh, dharmas are moving in the three times. Yeah. Dharma is moving in the three times, uh, so dharmi does not change its uh, uh, nature. Now, this existence of the dharmas in the three times, how do they exist? So the next sutra is telling, te bhakta sukshma gunatmanaha. Yeah. Uh, in the three times, the dharmas which are existing, they are Bhakta, Bhakta means they are manifested, they are sukshma, and they are subtle, that means uh, you do not see them or feel them, but they are existing. And they have these three gunas. Yeah. So, uh, now, you remember that uh, you see the yoga and the sankhya, they have a cosmology, you see. 
in the beginning there is a, this prakriti mula prakriti sometimes it is called pradhana this pradhana is one now uh, now when the creation has not started so in this pradhana the three gunas are in balance ah. when creation starts there is imbalance in the in this and so the creation starts mm. so um, then when they start they manifest themselves as uh, pravitti that means you have inclination towards certain things when the chitta has been formed there is some inclination to certain things um, and they have some uh, action and they have some energy also yeah. when you can see them correctly you see then you can be released from this uh, this chain from the chain of suffering you see when you can uh, you see so now the question arises and the question arises that <coughs> that when everything is composed of the three gunas then uh, how can you uh, how can you say that you see uh, uh, the eka shabda that means it is one you see uh, how can you how can you, you see uh, talk about uh, the uniqueness of a substance because substances are full of gunas, you see. Now, to answer that, the next sutra is saying, Purinamai ekatvat bostu tattvam. Since the, the result is one, so theoretically each uh, substance is unique that means um, your uh, idea is that there is uh, um, all the Indias, you take, for example, the organ of hearing, they have your know, three things, three gunas also, because Indias also have been manufactured out of gunas. But when they are these Indias uh, have combined together to produce the organ of hearing. The organ of hearing is one. So Parinama is one. That's why you say uh, we do not uh, feel that we have 
different organs. Uh, the, you see, for example, the hearing organ is unique. The smelling organ is unique. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, uh, that is the idea. that um, your do, do everything is uh, your composed of three gunas, but uh, they are manifestation, final manifestation is uh, unique. So that's why the, each uh, substance has its own uniqueness. Uh, now, you see, uh, this Yoga Sutras were composed, one of the ideas of the Yoga Sutras was to refute the uh, Buddhist philosophers. You see? So they say, Buddhist philosophers, that uh, all material things, they have no external existence. So that uh, the thing is existing, you suppose it to be existing, it is because of your mental imagination. So now, uh, to refute this, they are uh, saying, Vastu Samye Chitta Vedat Tayar Vibhakta Pantha Now, since we have said that each substance has its own uniqueness, mm. but Uh, but uh, the chittas are different. Yeah. And chitta is uh, the is the is the cause also yeah. of both jnana and gya. So the paths are different. What does it mean actually? It means that uh, uh, for example, there is a tree in front of you. Now many persons are seeing the tree and are feeling the tree. So there are many chittas, but a substance is common, that is one tree, particular tree. So it is not that this, and all of them are seeing the same tree, so you cannot say that uh, this tree which we are seeing 
has been manufactured by, by my by my mind or uh, someone else's mind. Yeah. It is not even your the imagination of uh, many many minds, but it is it has its own established point, independent of the imagination of the chittas. Ah. So, so though this substance in front of you may be the same, because of your this uh, chitta, sometimes uh, it is uh, um, because if your chitta has uh, much dharma in it, then you will have your feeling of happiness. If you have much adharma in it, you'll have feeling of suffering. That is, uh, you see, you find it in everyday world. The world, uh, as we see it, it, is, uh, it has been presented to all the minds. Someone is happy with it, Someone is always unhappy with it. So that shows, you see, this is due to the content of dharma and adharma in the mind. Hmm. Uh, So the bastu is the same. It is due to your different mindset. You see, chittas are different, so you have different feelings, different results. Mm. Um, next sutra uh, this is your because there are philosophers who say that you see that uh, due to the bhoga, which may be positive or negative, the a thing and a knowledge about that thing, you see, uh, are produced simultaneously. Yeah, uh, there is so. Yeah. Um, so when you, if you accept this, then uh, when. Uh, the knowledge about the thing is your blocked. For example, you see, uh, there is something, a barrier between the tree and you, and you are not seeing the tree. Uh, so, is the tree is being uh, destroyed then? because uh, your mind is not, uh, you see. So, so that, you see, point is being, because the, the, these are, you see, uh, these are 
uh, refuting of the Buddhist uh, philosophers that uh, there is uh, no substance outside. The mind is creating, you see, all these things. Nachaika chitta tantang vastu tad apravanakan tada king syat. That the chitta, uh, you see, is not controlling, is not controlling a substance. That means a, a particular substance is uh, not dependent on a particular chitta. Uh. So when it becomes, you see, absent to your perceptory organs, then what happens to it? Hmm. For example, when uh, the chitta is absent-minded, for example, you are in front of the tree, but you are absent-minded, you are not really seeing the tree. Or you have gone into samadhi, you are not seeing the tree. Does the tree uh, vanish at that moment? Okay. This is the uh, point. Mm. So uh, this yoga and sankhya, they hold that uh, each jiva is separate. See, though they have this same type of purusha connected with that, each jiva is separate. And in these different jivas, there are different chittas. But a particular thing is common to all the, all the jivas. So a, a, a particular thing um, uh, is uh, producing different effects on different minds because the, you know, uh. <laughs> so in the, Sankha Patanjala system, this, uh, uh, see these bastus, these uh, substances which are seen, and they are real. And the principle in us which is seeing it is also real. So, uh, so uh, from that point of view, they cannot accept the uh, Buddhistic things. Let us uh, your conclude here. If there is any question, you may ask. Hello. Yes, Swamiji, thank you. So uh, I, I, I do have one question. It's on this. Uh, you mentioned dharma and adharma in the mind. Yes. Dharma uh, is... Dharma means, you see, you are... Um, dharma means you are following, uh, you see, uh, dharma in the sense of um, that uh, there are some cosmic principles. If you follow... Uh, that will uh, generate your happiness, though there will be unhappiness also, because the unalloyed happiness does not exist in this phenomenal world, but generally you will be happy because of your dharmic practice. If you are go following the path of adharma, you see, 
that means you see idea is that man has certain propensities mm -hmm. but the dharmas means there are rules through which the mind must flow like a river they are like the banks of the river so these banks are the dharma so the water must you see go through this flow this uh, your channel you see so that you have you see otherwise you are hurting the divine principle and you will uh, you are confront much uh, unhappiness this is the idea of dharma and adharma thank you swamiji and uh, uh, one more question is on the you mentioned the, about the impressions that uh, mm. Even the slightest thought of wanting something, for example, will leave an impression. Yes. And so, but can, can as a practice, if you are aware of that and you can reverse it by, by saying, let's say, take the simple example of money, that you want money and then you actually try to give away, uh, you know, to reverse, mm. the, reverse the, the, the thought. You see, all things which are which lead to samskara, uh, samsara uh, so all desires which lead to samsara uh, you see uh, you cannot it is not uh, you see judicious to confront them frontally right you see if you should not try to confront them frontally. We should develop some other desires which nullify these. Mm -hmm. that's it. So that's why you should you should uh, you should read the moksha shastras, the spiritual texts. You should uh, think and adore, try to adore, you see, and uh, try to develop a love for the great yogis who have succeeded in controlling their mind, you see. So uh, try to love them deeply, and more deeply you try to love them, you see, other desires, uh, you see, they will be gradually eroded. Thank you very much, Swamiji. Okay.